for like a general hob- hobbyist, do you think there is much value in understanding, you know, spending time understanding bloodline traits or, you know, like, for example, Dainichi, um, Yellow Monkey versus yep. just, a, you know, Jinrin Karashi guy. Is it, can yep. you get caught up in that in, in terms of I want a Yellow Monkey? And I'll pay, because I couldn't find one this year that was within my price range. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's yeah, not. I think for me, knowledge on this stuff is is absolutely key, especially when the the further up the ladder you move in regards to what you're paying for fish. I don't think you can ever have too much knowledge mm-hmm. because you really can help yourself. What you what you do with having that more knowledge and experience is make everything slightly more predictable. Mm-hmm. So if, if you're going out there, you know, you have no knowledge of breeders, what they're about, lineages, or, you know, not a lot of experience in raising fish or any particular variety to know the, the development patterns or things like that, you really are in the dark. Mm-hmm. You're being completely guided by what the dealer's telling you, then you've got to trust that they actually know what they're on about and they've got all that experience and they're not just trying to tell you what you want to hear. Because mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately that does happen. So I think having that knowledge yourself is does absolutely make sense yeah uh, as, as i say there's certainly the more you spend you want to try and eliminate you know the variables of, of stuff you don't want to happen uh and mm-hmm. then yeah i mean when you come down to that yes it does make a difference if you're talking about giving ring crash you go yeah there's giving ring crash you go you can get some very good ones from a couple of breeds. i've got a couple of nice ones here from marisay mm-hmm. some bigger ones do they compare to those dainichi ones not in the slightest and I mean, I don't, I've got not a lot, I've not got a lot of information on that line yet. I've not had a chance to get it. I'm just from what I'm seeing uh, and just knowing again, knowing Dainichi as a farm. I mean, there's been a, a picture circulating today of a, of a four year old, 80 odd centimetre Sorogoy that's one of Shigeru Mano's uh, private collection fish. Mm-hmm. It's a monster and it is completely the image of Dainichi. It's what they want. It's got popping Fuka in. I think there's some Kado Gin and the body is just absolutely monstrous. So I, I know very well Dainichi's vision, what they want to achieve when they start producing a fish. It's not just a case of let's make some Ginrin Karashi Goy to make our mix look yeah. a bit better. The mix at that farm, they don't give a shit. That's not the commercial side of their business. Mm-hmm. What they get into, they get into to do it seriously. Mm-hmm. So in producing Ginrin Karashigoi, straight away I know, and I know from the, the ex Ginrin line that they're making, you know, Koaku, the Ginrin quality they have produced is just mind boggling. Yeah. It really is. So that they and it's a farm that's going to do everything to the best they can and they've got the resources, the knowledge, they'll be buying the best pair of fish they can get their hands on, just everything in mm-hmm. that chain. I know from knowing Dainichi what I'm going to expect. And then when it comes to the fish themselves, yeah, I mean, again, I don't know the full extent of it, but I know they love producing big fish. Everything about Dainichi's mark, making it, making that quality last a long time and getting size. Mm-hmm. So they haven't, they haven't just thrown together a few parent fish. I'm guessing, I'm, I'm guessing from what I've seen, there's some chagoy being thrown in somewhere because I've got a, a few reverting back a little bit more sort of chagoy color and chagoy type and it's normal in creating a crashigoy line that chagoy mm-hmm. is used uh but there will have been trust me in that lineage wife's watching how are you doing charlie i hope you've got me dinner on and now she's going to punch me when i get back you're brave <laughs> love you to bits uh yeah the uh I lost it's, but it's like it's, it's right, like it's right, like so yeah, yeah they, it's, sorry, it's sorry, the name on it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not. It's not even just the name. It's the culture of the farm, and it's knowing it's, that's what you're buying. Because I guarantee you, there will be a monstrous pair of fish somewhere mm-hmm. sat behind these Ginrin Karashi Goy. Yeah, and a knowledge of where that's come from, what they've crossed. And I mean, this is only the first year for them. And if it's something they continue, they'll just refine, 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 and uh, and keep getting better. But that's that is mm-hmm. what you're buying when you're buying these breeders mm-hmm. fish but what i'd also stress alan's here again alan you've still not phoned me about coming back on i'm going to fall out with you at this rate um uh, yeah lost it again uh yeah it's, it's, it's what they do so i mean we talk about you know some farms where they're producing varieties they're just literally whipping together a quick parent set to make 
a variety that then can enhance their mix because the mix they sell as tosai is what that farm's all about. It's why they get yeah. masses of, of people go to them, you know. They're in this tosai business and the, the better the mix looks, the more of them they sell every year. Mm-hmm. So if, if you go and get a Girin Crashy from them, it could just be some, you know, 60, 70 centimetre female that they've bought from the mate, throwing it together with, uh, a few of the fish and, and that's what that's what you've got so you know is that what you want well yeah if it's a nice fish and it suits your budget and everything great if you're looking at again you, you know doing something you want to raise and raise it big and know you're going to have the quality and longevity that's when you've got to look at these bigger brands breeders bloodlines whatever you want to call them and yeah. understand about not just the parent set that's thrown together i think it's important to understand the culture of the farm Mm-hmm. because that really dictates what what they're all about mm-hmm. and what and understand their vision for, for what they're trying to produce Mamatero is a prime example you know he, there's no bigger name in producing jumbo fish mm-hmm. and uh, jumbo go sanky that is what Mamatero is is all about you know everything there is big the ponds are massive um it's it's just crazy so yeah i hope that answers that one for you buddy <laughs> <laughs> 